today's on the go with Web 3.0, I want to talk about trends. Uh, but first of all, I would like you to watch a video uh, that was more or less from about two or three years ago, which is very, very funny from the Windows uh, video phone. And that was then. Now imagine how it is now. Actually, I think this uh, trend is now a very much a reality. And actually, it will give me a great start for the next trends that I'm going to be sharing with you. Have a look. Really? 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 It's time for a phone to save us from our phones. New Windows Phone, designed to get you in and out and back to life. Funny video from Microsoft, don't you think? I think it was very applicable then and still right now it's very, very applicable. I mean, it is a trend that we, it is actually growing because right now we are getting into Web 3.0. Now, I have been talking already about Web 3.0 for over a year and it still surprises me tremendously when I actually go into conferences that talk about Web 3.0 that people have no clue what this is. And this is something that I think is absolutely very, very critical that you understand. Now, I was watching a video from the 20 biggest trends happening right now in the world. And uh, one, one of the things that I realized, it was that eight out of the 20 were related to Web 3.0. So what I did is I actually made a compilation of those eight trends from TrendHunter.tv, which I think that you're going to really find very interesting. Have a look. Welcome to TrendHunter.tv. You hunt the trends, we put them on TV. And now the top 20. At 20, Vending 3.0. From facial recognition to live tweeting, vending machines are getting more interactive and creative. There's even a vending machine that lets you swap goods with other people. At 14, Shoptimization. Interactive retail is becoming more omnipresent, with apps that reward you with deals the second you step into your favorite store. Walk into your favorite fashion location and you might even see yourself getting a deal for crossing the street to check out a competitor. The future of retail strategy has become mobile. At 12, Deliberate Vintage. Deliberate Vintage is all about recreating the antiqued imagery of days past. Faded colors, vignetting, and grainy images are making a comeback, and Instagram's $1 billion acquisition is just one example of our fascination with the early days of technology. At 11, immersive branding. Interactive mega projections, branded bus rides, and chocolate organ concerts. Over the last couple of years, brands started engaging consumers online, but now the realization is that social media love will only follow if you're also able to delight those consumers in real life. The outcome is a new era in immersive branding. At 10, wearable multitasking. Why wear a watch that can only tell time when you can socially connect, play games, or even pay for stuff? Yeah, in an age where we're obsessed with multitasking, you can actually buy a credit card gaming internet watch. Finally. At 9, Subscription World. Guess what? You can now subscribe to clothing, furniture, underwear, and even food. Targeted subscription has moved beyond the magazine with a wide range of products from mega endorsers like Mary Kate and Ashley and Justin Timberlake. At 8, Physical Virtual. QR codes, virtual change rooms, and augmented reality. A world of digital delights are being incorporated into retail spaces, bridging the gap between tangible shopping and e-commerce. At number one, manufactured addiction. The shopping experience is becoming gamified. Retail apps for your phone, daily deal sites, and point reward systems are being ingrained in our culture, incenting consumers to buy and buy quickly in order to get that next big deal or points that unlock something even greater. There's never been a more exciting way to create a cultural connection with your consumer. If you'd like to find better ideas faster, visit TrendHunter.com and check out our customizable trend report platforms for your brand.
Well, there you go. Eight trends out of 20. Now, obviously, you can see that Web 3.0 is very, very important. So now let's go to another trend, which is also a little bit of on the dark side of trends. But also, I think it's very, very important that you're aware of because, of course, we want to find out what is going on also with a trend which is going to be affecting us all. Make sure to watch this full video because it's very important. The Internet is one of the United States' most robust and growing industries. It enables free and open communication among billions, and it's been the backbone for protests around the world. But a new bill proposes we give the power to censor the Internet to the entertainment industry. It's called Protect IP, and here's how it works. Private corporations want the ability to shut down unauthorized sites where people download movies, TV shows, and music. Since most of these sites are outside U.S. jurisdiction, Protect IP uses a couple different tactics within American borders. Firstly, it gives the government the power to make U.S. Internet providers block access to infringing domain names. They can also sue U.S.-based search engines, directories, or even blogs and forums to have links to these sites removed. Secondly, Protect IP gives corporations and the government the ability to cut off funds to infringing websites by having U.S.-based advertisers and payment services cancel those accounts. In a nutshell, that's what Protect IP will try to do. But in all likelihood, it'll do something else altogether. For starters, it won't stop downloaders. You'll still be able to access a blocked site just by entering its IP address instead of its name. What Protect IP will do is cripple new startups because it also lets companies sue any site they feel isn't doing their filtering well enough. These lawsuits could easily bankrupt new search engines and social media sites. And Protect IP's wording is ambiguous enough that important social media sites could become targets. Lots of trailblazing websites could look like piracy havens to the wrong judge. Tumblr, SoundCloud, and early YouTube, wherever people express themselves, make art, broadcast news, or organize protests, there's plenty of TV footage, movie clips, and copyrighted music mixed in. And even if you trust the U.S. government not to abuse their new power to censor the net, what about the countries that follow in our path and pass similar laws? People around the world will have very different internets, and unscrupulous governments will have powerful tools to hinder free expression. But perhaps most dangerously, Protect IP will meddle with the inner workings of the net. Experts believe by fiddling with the web's registry of domain names, the result will be less security and less stability. In short, Protect IP won't stop piracy, but it will introduce vast potential for censorship and abuse while making the web less safe and less reliable. This is the internet we're talking about. It's a vital and vibrant medium, and our government is tampering with its basic structure so people will maybe buy more Hollywood movies. But Hollywood movies don't get grassroots candidates elected. They don't overthrow corrupt regimes, and the entire entertainment industry doesn't even contribute that much to our economy. The internet does all these and more. Corporations already have tools to fight piracy. They have the power to take down specific content, to sue peer-to-peer -peer software companies out of existence, and to sue journalists just for talking about how to copy a DVD. They have a history of stretching and abusing their powers. They tried to take a baby video off YouTube just for the music playing in the background. They've used legal penalties written for large-scale commercial piracy to go after families and children. They even sued to ban the VCR and the first MP3 players. So the question is, how far will they take all this? The answer at this point is obvious. As far as we'll let them. Since we made this video, Protect IP has gotten much worse and is set up for quick passage. Now, the government and corporations could block any site, foreign or domestic, just for one infringing link. Sites like YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook would have to censor their users or get shut down, since they become liable for everything users post. And ordinary users could go to jail for five years for posting any copyrighted work, even just singing a pop song. Scary thought 
that the uh, entertainment industry has so much power, don't you think? I think we deserve a free internet. So that's why it's important that you actually keep abreast with these trends. Now, I hope that you have enjoyed this section of the show. And now it's time that we go with my good friend, James Franco. <laughs>